here today and to the Holy Spirit of Luther, and it's a special day we have for affirmation of baptism for two of our young men or commonly, more commonly known confirmation. So that will take place later. For now, we will stand and together uh, do our litany for all saints in the bulletin, and then the hymn is 424 in the red hymnal if you would like to have that ready. So please stand. Praise the Lord, all you saints. Praise the Lord, you heavenly hosts. Let us praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and all the patriarchs and prophets. Miriam, Ruth, and Naomi. Elizabeth, Mary, and all you holy women. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, James and John, and all of the evangelists and apostles, Stephen, Thomas, Peter, and Paul, Philip, Bartholomew, and all you holy martyrs, praise the Lord. Well, praise the name of the Lord. These are the saints whose robes are washed white in the blood of the Lamb. Praise, praise the Lord. We are the saints who are the living body of Christ, the church. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ, the love of God from which nothing can separate us, and the life-giving Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, whose people are knit together in one holy church, the body of Christ our Lord, grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as our reader, Doug, comes forward for our blessing and our readings. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from you. Bless Doug, who will read to us the scriptures. Make us hunger for the word of life, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, the 25th chapter. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who is seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Word of God, word of life. Please stand for our gospel acclamation. He said, Where have you laid him? Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone was lying against it. Jesus said, 
take away the stone. Now Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he's been dead four days. Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. you may be seated. Thank you, Carol. She had a dual role today. Mary and Martha. And thank you, Doug, for being Jesus for our Gospel and reading our two readings. So, today is All Saints Sunday. And it's an important day in the Christian church here. Now, last week we celebrated Reformation Sunday. It happened to be on the actual date of October 31st, Reformation Day. Now, most people know that day as what? Halloween, okay. But when Martin Luther nailed those 95 pieces to the church door, on October 31st, 1517, it was known as, I know some people know this, All, All Hallows Eve, which is the day before Hallows Day or All Saints Day. And the name All Hallows Eve derives from an old English word, hallow, means holy, sanctified. It's much easier to celebrate Halloween than it is um, other dates because especially if you have children or grandchildren but when it comes to all saints many of us are really not sure about what its significance is in our lives is it because we're not really certain what a saint really is most of us when we hear the word saint think someone like Mother Teresa or maybe Billy Graham somebody like that. But saints are believers in Christ Jesus. As St. Paul says in so many openings to his letters, he calls the people saints, and we will be there and ready. When Jesus comes to be glorified by his saints and to be marveled at on that day among all who have believed. That's from 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 10. So this day not only celebrates those who have gone before us, but all people who are in Christ. We are all saints in God's eyes. Now another reason many don't like to think of this day or celebrate it is because it deals with the truth of death. All saints does deal with that. And on this day we will remember in the prayers those who have gone in this last year and two, actually, those who we know, whether they're from this congregation or family and friends. But for Christians, all saints should be one of the most significant days of our year. It's reassuring and comforting. On this day, we're able to stare death in the face and realize it can't conquer those who are faithful to Christ. Death does not win the battle. And on this day, we are reminded that Christ already won that battle, already won our salvation and our eternity through his death. Now this past week, I happened upon a story that I thought was so significant. It's written by Catherine Schiffer Decker, ELCA pastor and now a professor at one of our seminaries, Luther Seminary in Minnesota. And she writes these words, 
Many years ago now on All Saints Sunday, I happened to be preaching, and it was a particularly difficult year for the rural congregation I served in Wisconsin. The congregation had experienced the deaths of several elderly members that year, as is typical in any parish, but they'd also mourned the passing of two women who were beloved pillars in the community, that church. One of the women was in her 40s and had been battling breast cancer for many years. She was a feisty and energetic person who loved to laugh and was the life of the party. And she beat the odds many times over her struggle with cancer, but finally she slipped into a coma. And we gathered around her hospital bed and prayed and gave her permission to pass on. The other woman was in her 50s. She was a farmer's wife with a large extended family, including grandsons in grade school. And they adored her. And she fell ill one spring, early spring, and then was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. She died a few weeks later. Her death was a shock to everyone. She had been so vital, so involved with the congregation. The two funerals were held two weeks apart, and the church was filled to overflowing with all the mourners. So when All Saints Sunday rolled around that year, and we read the names of all of those who had died in the past year, including these two women, and then I got up to preach and read the gospel, looked over the congregation, and stated the obvious, it has been a really hard year for this congregation. The gathered assembly let out an audible sigh and heads nodded in agreement. It was as if acknowledging that from the pulpit gave them permission to acknowledge the burden of collective grief and lay it down for just a moment. From then, and that story, we fast forward now to today. 2021. It's been a hard year, and not just a year, it's been a hard 20 months for us. 750,000 people have died in the United States of COVID or related causes, 5 million in the world. And of course, the same reality of COVID's relentless march was true last year on All Saints Sunday. But All Saints Sunday was earlier in the month, if you remember, and it was followed by something very important to all people in this country, the election. It was very contentious. And so many Americans were focused on that versus COVID. And the collective grief couldn't really be acknowledged in most congregations, including this one, because we were meeting virtually. We were not in person. We weren't even streaming. We were watching uh, YouTube videos that Norm had so graciously recorded and posted. So this year, even as this pandemic continues, and effective vaccines have been found, and there's some sense of normalcy, but when you think of the collective burden of those many, many deaths over the 20 months, it's difficult. And chances are, most of us know someone or someone related to someone we know who has died because of COVID. So perhaps on this All Saints Sunday, it's time to acknowledge the weight of that pain and power of death over these last 20 months. And the readings help do that for us as saints. Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. We heard Martha and Mary both say in the gospel. And the rebuke of Mary and Martha echoes what many of us probably have felt. And inherent in this rebuke is the question, Lord, why weren't you here? Your beloved brother had died and Jesus was absent. The Isaiah text speaks of death as the shroud that's cast over all people, the sheet spread over the nations. Death is the great equalizer. 
There's no nation, no people immune from death. Now, in ancient Canaanite myths, death boasts that his appetite is like that of lions in the wilderness, insatiable, and will devour everything in his path. That image of death as the great devourer is one that may underline this vision in Isaiah. Because the enemy here is not Syria or Egypt or another foreign power. It's death itself into whose gaping mouth all living things eventually disappear, swallowed up forever. Now, modern Western society isn't nearly as forthright about death as the ancient Canaanites and Israelites. We do not ourselves normally prepare a loved one's body for the funeral. We don't dig the graves by hand or lower the caskets into them. We have our loved one's bodies cremated or we have them in a casket and at the graveside, normally, you know, the casket is there or, you know, the ashes. And the grave is normally covered until it's time to lower that in. Most of the time it's after we have left. Now, COVID made even these rituals very difficult. Countless people weren't able to say goodbye to their family and friends. Funerals were live streamed, or they were just at cemeteries as a memorial. So it was tough to be able to say goodbye. But if we look at today's text, we have promises from the first two especially. And the gospel, of course, from Jesus. Death may have swallowed up many in our lives over the last few years, but we're still here and we're still saints of God. In the text, God becomes the death of death. Listen again to a little bit of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a rich feast of food, of well-aged wines filled with marrow, of well-aged wines that are strained and clear. He will destroy on this mountain the shroud cast over all peoples, the sheet spread over. He will swallow up death forever. And then in Revelation, great hope. See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their guide. He will be, they will be his peoples. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. Death, the great devourer, will itself be swallowed up forever, we're told. And we will celebrate this final victory together with the saints, we're told, at the great marriage feast of the Lamb. And the only tears allowed at this feast are the ones of joy at being back in the presence of those whom we have loved and lost. Those indeed are powerful images that anchor our hope on this All Saints Sunday. My prayer is that our hope continues and that through death we know we have eternal life through Jesus as his saints. Let us pray. For God, as we come to you this day and we think of those many, many lives lost in these past 20 months. Within this congregation and beyond, we ask that you would guide us and help us in our grief. Help us to know and understand that you are with us through all things, even death. As we prepare to celebrate the feast here on earth, we call Holy Communion, Remind us that we, it is a foretaste to the feast that will come for us one day with you gathered around the throne with all who are your saints. In Jesus' name. Amen. We'll take a few moments for reflection and then we're going to sing hymn 423, Shall We Gather at the River?
Shepherd, we'll wait a minute for your brother to show up. I think he just decided he didn't want to do it, right? Is that what it was? Okay. I saw him get up and I thought, yeah, that's perfect right there. There he is. We can't start without you. So right about right there is good. Okay. So dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and it's for Harrison and Shepherd. I already told Garrett his name is in here again. One with us in the body of Christ who are making public affirmation of their baptism. We present Harrison and Shepherd who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Yeah, that's good. Got to make sure you're seen on the streaming, right? Mm -hmm. All you streaming people out there. <laughs> Thank you, Donna, who was their confirmation teacher for these many years. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, nourish them in the community of faith, uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom we are brought to new births. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. So I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, and you will respond, I renounce them after every question. So do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. And to the whole assembly, you can remain seated. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ. God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. You intend to continue in the covenant God has made with you in holy baptism to live among God's faithful people. Hear the word and share in the Lord's Supper to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support these young men and pray for them for their lives in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Now is the big moment for your memory verses. We'll let you go first. I'll hold that for you. Your, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Good. Shepherd. For those who want to save their life will lose it. For those who lose, lose their life for my sake will find it. Very good. 
So first Harris son, I'm going to just, I would have you kneel, but it's just too much trouble here. So <laughs> Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Harrison the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in the shepherd the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. You can turn and face these wonderful people. Let us rejoice with these brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. You can applaud if you'd like. <laughs> but before you go down there, I already told you we have a couple of things for you. I'm going to make sure I have the right one here, Harrison. So this is a Bible that I got, and it has your name in there in the front. And there's a certificate of affirmation of baptism and a card that our council members and others have signed thank you for both of you, thank you. and thank you for being here and you know now i'm done with the kerns <laughs> <laughs> they're all at they're all confirmed all of them were baptized here correct yes so um afterwards you were invited to join us for some fellowship out there's a big cake out there, and there's one person on the cake. The... No, we did find me. Oh, did you yeah. fix? Oh, it is there? Okay. <laughs> Ruth had ordered the cake and asked for it to have white flowers, and so they did all white, and then they kind of merged the two names together, but you found the hand. That's good. That's good. So congrats Thank to you. both of to you, Shepard and Harrison. Thank you. At this time, we're going to stand for our prayers, and as part of uh, All Saints, we of course have names. I'm going to read of many people that have gone on to their eternal homes. So, called in the unity with one another in the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the social ministries of the church around the world, and for every ministry that heals, lifts up, and empowers those who are poor, oppressed, abused, abandoned, or ignored. Hear us, O oh God. We praise you for the bounty of creation and the world of abundance. Protect the earth from all that would devour its resources. Hear us, O oh God. We give you thanks for leaders who seek peace for all nations and lead efforts toward greater justice. Accompany all who suffer the wounds of war with veterans who carry battle scars from the past and all who promote peace today. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We praise you for plentiful harvests and generous hearts. Send needed resources and caring neighbors to all in need. We pray for refugees, orphans, widows, those unemployed, those suffering, abused, all in need. Restore to health all who are sick in any way. Especially, we lift up Mary Martin, who had successful surgery and is now home. And also those we name before you now. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. We give you thanks for the saints of this congregation who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us, especially those we have lost in the past two years. Lorraine Eliasson, Don Freyer, Dick Longenbach. We also give you thanks for Marie Therese Matter, the mother of Heinz Matter. Gerhard Holtko, who is the uncle 
a pig from there. Thomas Williams, her brother of Ruth, Juba. Richard Davis, brother-in-law of Sue Gates. Shirley Grobus, Madeline Penny, aunts of Sue Gates. Avery Penny, uncle of Sue Gates. David Swinehart, husband of Sue Gates' cousin. David Pesek, Michael Pesek, grandsons of Sandy Thayer. Kathleen Gore, mother of Sandy Thayer. Victor Dow Jr., grandfather of Brian Welch. Marshall Blake, uncle of Melinda Kern. Carolyn Optoff Southern, sister of Doug Optoff. June Embry, Grant Hood. David Cress, Pete Vallow. Ray Rizzi, Jack Meissner, Jim Anderson, Keith Dole, Scott Seaborn, June Henry, or Paul Washer, Tom Glasscock. Comfort all who grieve and lead us by their example until you gather us into your heavenly home. Hear us, O oh God. <laughs> Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed be Christ, our peace who breaks down the walls that divide the peace of the Lord. Be with you always. And also with you. Again, we are not sharing the peace around, but if you have family and friends nearby, you may do so. seated as our ushers come forward, or usher, I guess, for the offering. Oh, ushers, okay. If you come forward for our prayer, and then we will take the offering. Let us pray. To God, we give you thanks for the gifts you give us. We thank you especially for the many, many financial gifts we have been given. Help us now to return a portion that may be used for your service. In Jesus' name. Amen.
your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to do our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. In the blessedness of your saints, you have given us a glorious pledge of the hope of our calling, that moved by their witness and supported by their fellowship, we may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and with them receive the unfading crown of glory. And so, with the church on earth, and in heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn. saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new promise in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of him. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. You may be seated as you should have received communion. Did everybody get it? Oh, good. And uh, as you take those now, and we will sing during that, remember it's the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Announcements. I'm not going to 
mention all of them. I do want to mention the vaccine clinic that's at Holy Cross Lutheran in Livonia. You read through that. If you know anybody that needs any of those vaccines, please refer them uh, for next Sunday, just so um, if they need to receive those. The 10 more days to bring the Thanksgiving food basket items. There should be the sign-ups on there still. We have quite a few items already. How many more turkeys do we need? Three. Okay. Other announcements other than what's already in your patron. There is a microphone there if anybody you know. Okay. So I want to thank everybody who came last week to our Polaris Cafe. So we made a really good effort with our groups. So it's great. Everybody came and it's been amazing. Thank you all. And then I also wanted to thank all of you who helped me making this happen. Because uh, excuse me, it's but it's fun, but still many people can help you. Thank you. Yeah. Chuck, you're gonna talk. Yeah. Oh. I just wanted to say uh the last return girl that was there is just around the most beautiful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as you know, it's been said I think it's been a little the way there is. And I just wanted to thank all of you for being part of our group. <laughs> but thank you, thank you so much. Ruth. Friday, uh, Fifth Carrot, that's our uh, dinner with friends. Please sign up. You can have to confirm the reservation with them. So if you can sign up and let us know if you're coming or not, then I will be able to talk to them about how many people there actually will be. Um, that's it. I think what we have is the food basket. We did receive enough cereal and we received um, canned pumpkins, which is not on the list, but if anyone wanted to add pumpkin to it, that would probably be helpful because we've got uh, pumpkin for everyone. And we have all the food cutters, but we don't have any else. So <laughs> take a look at, um, at the list and take a look at the back to see what it is that you might want to. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. I don't see any other hands up. So we're going to stand, we're going to have a benediction, and then our closing hymn is again, as I said, 422. Notice the verse numbers that we're singing. So please stand. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with faith and grant you peace. Amen.
serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. You do have a Just village roll. here, don't you? We do have a village. <laughs> <laughs> we should get you and uh, all your Sunday school kids. So, so oh, is that a promise? Last year? Last year. Yeah, it does. 